Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video where we will be conquering the concept of urine sodium. Now, urine sodium can come up in your MCQs, typically framed within a question about hepatorenal syndrome or hydration status or everyone's favorite SIADH. <laughs> So what I want to do today is a very short video just to give you this concept of urine sodium so that it's easy for you and you know exactly what's going on when you see those MCQs. Okay, so if you take only one thing away from this video, it should be that the urine sodium tells us whether the kidney is feeling perfused or not. A low urine sodium tells us that the kidney is trying to hold on to salt and water. And if the urine sodium is not low, then it means the kidney is feeling pretty perfused, pretty happy about its salt and water situation, and it's letting salt and water spill into the urine. Now, of course, that's only true if someone is not on diuretics and they have otherwise fairly functional, healthy kidneys. So if they're on a diuretic or they have severe renal disease, the urine sodium might not help you at all. Okay, so let's unpack that in just a little bit more detail. The first thing to understand is the relationship between sodium and water. You've probably noticed that water is a free spirit. It sort of does its own thing. It's very hard to tame water. And when it comes to being in your body, water is always looking for an escape, right? It's always weighing up its choices. If it leaves your body, it gets to go back to the ocean. But if it stays in your body, it's gonna need some incentives. And that incentive is its love of sodium and a good concentration gradient. It just cannot resist this. Where sodium goes, water flows. And within the nephron, we have lots of different places where we can capitalize on this relationship between sodium and water. In the proximal tubule, we have countless sodium channels which reabsorb sodium back into the body, among other things. And this is where the majority of sodium is reabsorbed. Any sodium that is not picked up here can be mopped up later in the nephron, in the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, and collecting ducts. So basically, in every part of the nephron, we have channels and transporters which help us to take in sodium and create a beautiful concentration gradient for water reabsorption. And these sodium channels are under the influence of various hormones, including everyone's favorite, the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. This kicks off when the kidney perceives a low perfusion in the afferent arterio. It will release renin, and of course, angiotensin II will increase as a result. Angiotensin II will promote vasoconstriction, but it also promotes water reabsorption by doing a couple of things. Angiotensin II will go to the proximal tubule and ramp up those sodium channels so we can reabsorb more salt and water. It also promotes the release of aldosterone from the adrenal glands, and this aldosterone will go to the kidney, to the collecting ducts, and promote salt and water reabsorption there. And we're not even done yet. Angiotensin II will also promote the release of vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone. And this will go to the kidney and help us to absorb water by placing aquaporins in those collecting ducts, allowing that water to come back into the body along its concentration gradient. Now, if you would like a refresher on the loop of Henle or aldosterone, then I have a couple of videos that you will find really helpful and I'll, I'll leave a link to those above and below. <laughs> But what you can see here is that across the board, activating the renin angiotensin aldosterone system promotes sodium reabsorption in order to entice water back into the body. As a result of this highly effective system, provided you don't have renal dysfunction or diuretics on board, then you will find that these scenarios lead to a low urinary sodium. When the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is activated, you should have a low urine sodium, typically less than 20 milli equivalents per liter. So a low urine sodium tells us that the kidney perceives a low blood supply, low perfusion, and this can happen in two broad scenarios. Scenario number one is the person who really does have a low blood volume and they would definitely benefit from salt and water reabsorption. 
And then there's scenario number two, the person with the medical condition which makes the kidney think that it has a low perfusion, even though that person is floridly overloaded. So for example, conditions which do this include heart failure or hepatorenal syndrome. So in heart failure, it's a case of a low cardiac output causing the kidneys to think that they're underperfused. And in hepatorenal syndrome, there's a dilatation of the splanchnic circulation and that diverts blood supply away from the kidneys, again making the kidneys think that they don't have enough blood supply. So to summarize, a low urine sodium indicates that the kidneys are trying to conserve salt and water either because of true dehydration or low blood volume or because of a condition which makes the kidney feel starved of blood supply, such as hepatorenal syndrome or severe heart failure. But we can only interpret this in the context of functional kidneys that are not salt wasting and in the absence of diuretics. And this low urine sodium is basically because the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is activated. And on the flip side, something that confuses people is SIADH. When we're learning about SIADH, we're told that the urine sodium is usually greater than 40 milli equivalents per litre. And that's the nature of SIADH. And we're just supposed to remember that and hold on to that somehow, right? I don't know how. <laughs> but basically what this means, syndrome of inappropriate ADH means that there's lots of ADH around, so lots of water reabsorption into the body. And remember that ADH is purely about water reabsorption. It is purely about putting aquaporins into that collecting duct. It has nothing to do with sodium, right? So renin angiotensin aldosterone system promotes sodium and water reabsorption. Vasopressin just promotes water reabsorption. Two different things. So SIADH is a tutorial for another day. But when we're talking about the urine sodium, what we're saying here is that in SIADH, there's lots of ADH, so lots of water coming back into the body. And under those circumstances, the kidney will feel very perfused. Renin will be at an all-time low, the kidney's happy, it's got plenty of blood volume, and the kidneys are just going to let that sodium go. I hope that makes perfect sense. So that was urine sodium in a nutshell. I hope this helps your studies. And if you are studying for your written exams and you want to learn sodium the fun way, and the way which will make you actually understand sodium, come along to the Reno for the Written program where we will unpack everything so you can actually understand it and actually remember it. I hope to see you there and otherwise stay tuned here on YouTube for some more higher learning. <laughs> Bye!